talk to you today about why you should ask God to save you. We're going to start out in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. There's some very wicked people out there that are trying to say that you don't have to ask God to save you. You just, uh, by an act of your own mental capacity, you just declare yourself to be saved. There's no calling out to the Lord and Lord and saying, hey, can you please save me? God, please save me. Crying out to Him. No, you don't need to do any of that stuff. You just, you just decree it in your own mind. Okay, I'm now a Christian. Boom. You know? Let's look at what the Scriptures say. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. We then as workers together with Him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Can you receive the grace of God in vain? Yeah. Absolutely. For He saith, I have heard thee. In a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Um, God, you mean God hears you on the day of your salvation? Um, yeah, that would probably mean that you have to call upon Him to be saved. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Let's go next to uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Can you receive the grace of God in vain? The answer is yes. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. All right? That's the grace of God. And you can receive it in vain. God has grace for everybody. And you can mistake that grace that He has for you as salvation. You can say, well, God hasn't killed me yet, and God hasn't, you know, He lets me live, and He lets me get away with this stuff here, so I think I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I go to church. I read my Bible. I, I, I pray. I say, and I say a little prayer once in a while, you know. You're receiving the grace of God in vain. You say, is it possible to believe in vain? Oh, absolutely. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 1 and 2, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Can you believe in vain? The Bible says you can. You say, well, I know a pastor, and he says, the Bible says you can. That's the end of the story. You can believe in vain. Hmm. Unless you have received the grace of God in vain. Yeah. God heard the sinner. Let's look about that. Romans chapter 10. What does the Bible say about God hearing a sinner? Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's one event. You say, well, no, you believe, and then later on you can start to kind of... That's ridiculous. It says there, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In the day of salvation have I heard thee, God says. How does he hear thee? How does he hear? Because you're calling out to him. You're confessing with your mouth. Verse 11, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Call upon him. Verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You call upon the Lord. In a day of salvation, he hears you. Well, I think call could mean something else. Well, then you probably ought to get some help mentally. Okay? Call means call. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 30 through 33. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. 
Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. You get a man, he's praying, and an angel comes and says, God heard you. And now it's time for you to get saved. I'm going to go send for this man. He's going to come. He's going to tell you how to be saved. See, it's a transition, transitional thing. The book of Acts is a transitional thing. You don't have to pray. and You, know, you can't really get saved until the angel comes and tells you to call for a certain preacher to come. And No, 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 no. It's transitional. The gospel's not fully revealed yet. All right? But the whole point I'm trying to make is he's calling, God hears, salvation comes much quicker now okay you call upon the name of the Lord God will hear you that's why he says now is the accepted time now is the day of salvation Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 another part there of uh, 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 to through 2 it says that in the day of salvation have I secured thee secure means help that's what it means Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um. In the day of salvation have I secured thee. Huh. He's, he's helped you. With what? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Are you tired of sin? Are you tired of the life that you have? You come to Jesus Christ and He'll help you. You say, oh wow, well, how's He going to help me? Is He going to hug me? Uh, no, He's going to say, come here. Okay. Lean forward, you lean forward, and he puts a yoke around your neck. Clamps it in there, locks it, and says, you belong to me now. You're my bond servant. Come on. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden's light. I'm going to teach you how to fight against the sin in your life so you don't mess up your life more. Come on. And he pulls you by the chain, and off you go. Bond servant of Jesus Christ. Your knife, your life is not your own. You're bought with a price. The Bible says. Are you his bond servant? Does he tell you what to do? If not, then you better ask him to save you. Go next to uh, Romans chapter six. Romans chapter 6, verses uh, 6 through 8. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. You go down through the, all of the chapter 6 there in Romans, and it talks about fighting sin, and that you're no longer supposed to live in sin. Doesn't mean you won't mess up, certainly, that's always there. But you're not supposed to live a life of perpetual just, just sinning all the time and having no conviction. That's not supposed to be that way. Hmm, how about that? Has God uh, secured you since you've been saved? Has He helped you to get away from the sins of your past? Does the Holy Spirit of God that resides in your body as a Christian, does the Holy Spirit convict you when you're going to do something wrong? When you do something wrong, are you chastened for it? Hmm. I guess that's it for the scriptures we're going to turn to there. But uh, just close by giving you a little thing to think about. What do you call somebody that takes something without asking for it? 
uh, you would call them a thief, wouldn't you? Um, there's a lot of salvation thieves out there that think that they can take salvation for themselves without asking God for it. Now's the day of salvation. If you don't know for sure where you're going to go when you die, you better get saved today. And you get saved by calling upon the name of the Lord, asking Him to help you. God, I can't save myself. I'm a sinner. I've messed my life up. The only thing I've been consistent about in my life is just running myself into the ground. As good as I try to be or as I try to clean up my life and reform my life and whatever else, and I just keep messing up. I just keep on destroying things and hurting people and, and being hurt by other people and whatever. I'm tired of it. And the thought of me trying to work my way and be a good person to get into heaven, never going to happen. Never. That's why, Jesus, you're my only chance. God, please save me. I can't save myself. Your, your word talks about sin and your word says the wages of sin is death. And I'm going to end up in a place called hell unless I have somebody that can save me. Somebody that can secure me. God, will you please hear me today? Can you help me? Can you get me out of this place called hell? Can you show me how to get rid of these sins in my life? Can you clean up this miserable life that I have? Can you make me a new creature? Do it today. Say, well, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, I kind of, I got to be getting going here. I'm going to watch another video. I got to go see what some friends say. and what. Nothing's more important. The Bible doesn't say any day is the accepted time. Any day is good for salvation. It says now. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. And for heaven's sake, don't listen to anybody that tells you that you don't have to ask God to save you. You see any preacher out there, any preacher, I don't care who he is, how much education he has, what he professes, whatever, anybody says to you that you don't have to ask God to save you. You are looking at a thief, at a lying, false thief that says you don't need to ask God to save you. They don't know the scriptures. The Bible says that God hears the sinner. When they come to him, he's not going to hear the sinner, the, the prayers of a sinner that's just saying, oh, God, please bless me and whatever, whatever. No, no, he doesn't hear those prayers. But the prayer that the, that the Lord will hear from the sinner is that prayer that starts the relationship between Savior, God, and sinful man. The prayer that says, God, I'm a sinner. I need your help. Please, God, save me. I believe that this book tells me that I can be saved. I want to know that I have eternal life. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about my relationships. I don't care about my job. I don't care about my things. I don't care about anything else. I want to know for sure that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. I need help. I want a different life than what I have right now. Please, God, save me. Secur me. Help me. I need your help. I can't save myself. I want a new life. That's what you pray doesn't have to be those exact words. You pray it between you and the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Do it today.